Hi everybody, it's great to see you again. Uh, we're taking a meal together, a snack together in the Bible, which we uh, believe is the Word of God. And so it makes us spiritually strong just to eat together uh, from the Scriptures. And today we're going to continue on in a few verses in Mark's first chapter. Um, the title th today is, is one that we don't hear very often among us, and it's Repent. Uh, it's all about repentance today and um, something which, which uh, comes as part of the good news of the coming of Jesus. Two weeks ago, we looked at the fact that, that the coming of Jesus is good news. We are, we are filled, first of all, by good news. Um, there's not much point even in you being filled with the Spirit if you're not filled with the good news of Jesus. Uh, what is it you're going to prophesy? What is it you're going to uh, show to us from your life? So Jesus is good news. And then last week, uh, we, we talked about John the Baptist, really, and that spirit of yelling and shouting, clear the path, make and keep the pathway from heaven open for Jesus to uh, come down. And I encourage even Christians that have um, been a Christian for, for a while now uh, to, to give attention to that. We see nations that built great roads generations ago, and now they're falling down and not being repaired. And uh, that just shows a loss of something serious in the nation. So for ourselves, let's keep that road in good working order as Jesus comes uh, into our life in visitation. Um, Mark 1 verses 14 and 15, we've got to now, says, Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee, where he preached. And he preached God's good news. That's what the scripture says. Jesus starts preaching. Uh, I'm sure that, that I'm not the only one who's keen to hear what it is that Jesus has come to say to the world. He's come as Messiah. He's come as the Son of God. He calls himself the Son of Man. This is all wonderful stuff. But now he's opening his mouth to preach to his first crowd. Uh, and what he preaches is God's good news. That was Jesus's message. I've come to help you. I've come to heal you. I've come to save you. I've come to bring the love of God you know, into, into the world. What's the downside? We all cry. And he says, no, I haven't come to judge you. I've come to save you. And if I was coming to judge you, you'd be crushed, all of you, everyone. But I haven't come to judge you. I've come to help you and to save you. Oh God, fill all of your servants with that same spirit that we have not come here to judge each other, uh, but to see the work of salvation and grace working uh, among us. Um, he had come to save, to heal, and to lead people to his Father. That was his crucial direction in ministry, to bring everyone back to his Father from whom we had become separated. And he was a welcome sight, especially to those who were poor, powerless, marginalized, um, no real resources, uh, the lowest of the low. He was great news to, to them, not so much to people who had power and wealth already, because they were fine as they were, they felt, but to the poor and to the, to the disadvantaged, to those that were living under injustice and just being neglected. He was good news indeed. And what he says, um, it comes in, in four layers, and I just want to put those to you. First of all, he says, the time is now starting on when he said it and still running today for 2,000 years, the word of Jesus is about timing is the time is now. Don't wait for Jesus. Don't wait to get saved. Don't put off being baptized in water. Don't neglect being filled with the Spirit. And don't neglect forgiving the people around you and your family. Do it now for the time is now. So in time, we've arrived. We've got there. This is the time, says the Lord. In, in terms of the kingdom of God, in terms of his rule, um, it says the distance is zero. The kingdom of God is near, meaning right here with you. You can reach out and touch it. It's in you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. It's in your bones. The kingdom of God has come very, very near. Um, it's not far away. It's here now and it's within reach. And then the other two layers, layer three and four, are these. It says, repent of your sins. Um, so these are the first things that Jesus is saying. And he says to Israel, says to the listeners, repent of your sins. And then he says, believe the good news. So you don't need to wait anymore. The time is near. The time has come. The time is now. You don't need to go searching for the kingdom of God. It's come near to you. Jesus has come near. He's standing right in the middle of the circle. The kingdom is here. So we are to repent of our sins and believe the good news. Now, repentance is something which is not often preached. Uh, believing the good news is something which is preached all the time. Uh, repentance is something which is our first step out of the darkness. Believing the good news is living in the light. 
And I want you to ask yourself, just this interesting little conundrum from me, what would happen if we preached good news without preaching repentance? What kind of people would we produce? What would be the result? And I want us to know the power of repentance, the power of coming out of the darkness of a life lived without God into the full light of the good news of Jesus. And so to finish this week, I want you to set your minds on repentance and humility as qualities of you as a Christian, me as a Christian. Um, live life on your knees before God. Always be humble and then you'll be living like Jesus. Jesus was forever going away with his father, falling on his knees before him, and he came as a humble man. And so if we do that, if we walk in the good of our repentance today, if we fall on our knees in humility before the Lord, then the blessings of God will fall upon us. Uh, don't think of repentance as a one-time deal. Did you repent? Yes, 30 years ago, and never since. Don't think of it as a one-time deal. Like your water baptism, it's something that can keep feeding into your life throughout your Christian walk. And it's not just a door into the kingdom, but it's an attitude of living in the kingdom, to be repentant and full of humility. Lamentations 3, this is verse 22 and 23, says, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin fresh every morning. If his mercies are fresh every morning, then I'm going to go and repent every morning and get the good of those mercies coming to me. Um, mercies that smell like fresh bread, repentance that smells like fresh bread, constantly taking in the good of those mercies. If he's going to be merciful to you tomorrow morning, then fall on your knees in repentance and humility and eat that up. Come to me, says Jesus. All of you are weary and carry heavy burdens. And I'm so aware that there are many of us carrying heavy burdens right now. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. I've noticed recently that one preacher talks about repentance as being God's gift of rest to us. So repent, humble yourself before God and rest in the heart of your Father who loves you. Good to see you. See you next week on Fresh Bread.